Hey guys, Paolo here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got some really cool stuff to show you. I was able to purchase the first ever iPod for the Mac and the first ever iPod for Windows. Originally dubbed as the M8541 and the A1019 for Windows, these two devices is what helped skyrocket Apple back in 2001 and 2002. So let's take a look at these two that if it wasn't for them, we probably wouldn't have the iPhone today. Well, let's go ahead and check it out. Well, here it is folks, the iPod M8541. Now I was able to grab this from eBay. I just on eBay for many, many days and I just couldn't find one that's in its pristine condition. And I wasn't one who really wanted one that was unboxed or brand new in box. I just wanted something that had a piece of history that I can keep that is not in rough shape, but is one that I can sort of hold on to and keep for the long term. And I found this store that was simply selling it as part of a junk sale or some sort of estate sale. So I immediately contacted the guy since he was also here in Toronto and I immediately purchased it from him for under $300. And here it is. So with this iPod, when I first got it, I was blown away as to how pristine its condition was. And you can see here from the back, the original iPod and one small detail that can differentiate the original iPod from the second generation iPod is the font of the iPod logo. On the back, you can see that it's got this really traditional font for the iPod, whereas the new one now has a flatter sort of look to it. Then of course, what you probably heard is the mechanical scroll wheel. The original iPod does have a mechanical scroll wheel which does rotate and this was something was brand new back then. We didn't have any touch capacitive buttons back then. Instead, Apple used a mechanical wheel so that you're able to scroll through your hundreds or even thousands of music titles. When the second iPod came out, they replaced the mechanical wheel with a touch sensitive wheel. Apple dubbed this as a more reliable option in a sense that the mechanical wheel has mechanical features and has parts that could wear out over time. Whereas the second gen iPod, which was the first iPod for Windows, was also available for the Mac. And this time they've upgraded the touch scroll wheel with a touch capacitive one. So this one definitely will stand the test of time much better. And ever since then, all classic iPods with the circular rotary controls have a touch capacitive wheel moving forward. The only iPod to ever have that mechanical rotary wheel was the first one. So here it is folks, the M8541, the original iPod that first came out back in 2001, proudly presented by Steve Jobs. This iPod wasn't the first MP3 player to come out. In fact, this was the time when I had my Creative Nomad series, which itself already had six to 10 gigabytes of space. And the original iPod having five gigabytes of space didn't really blow me away at the time. And I wasn't really a Mac user back then, so this device wasn't really something I was after. However, when the second iPod, that was a Windows compatible device, for me, this was something that I really wanted to have. However, back then, it still was a Firewire connection. None of my devices had any Firewire connectivity, so I was pretty much out of luck in getting an iPod at the time. Plus, with the vast variety of different MP3 players back then, there really was no shortage of MP3 players. The iPod was just gaining full steam and Creative really was the forefront of all MP3 players. There were other premium players out there like iRiver, but Creative pretty much dominated the market back in the early 2000s. Now let's take a look at the first iPod that ever came out for Windows, the A1019 model. 
This model was significant as it was the first official iPod compatible with Windows. Launched in 2002, it broadened Apple's reach to a whole new audience. With its 10GB upgraded storage, it could hold up to 2,000 songs, which was really impressive back then in 2002. This move by Apple was crucial in cementing the iPod's place as a dominant player in the digital music world. So as you probably know back then, Macs weren't really as big as they are today in 2024. In the early 2000s, Windows was dominating, Apple was just getting back on its feet, and the iPod was the first step into gaining back global market share. And this model, the A1019, really reached a lot of people who didn't have the Mac at the time, but was really curious about checking out the Apple ecosystem, but had the Windows platform at the time, so now with the A1019 iPod, a lot more people were able to experience the iPod. Both these iPods weren't just devices. They were cultural icons that transformed the music industry. They changed the way we consume music, moving from CDs to digital libraries. The ease of carrying a whole library in your pocket was really revolutionary. And I know that Apple really wasn't the first one to do this, but they were the first to bring it to a global awareness, thanks to their great ads, thanks to the involvement of various artists. A lot of people were able to sort of understand the digital revolution that the iPod brought with it. And of course, these devices also paved the future of Apple innovations like the iPhone. So for me, holding them takes me back in time. There's just something about these tactile feel of click wheels and the simplicity of the user interface that modern touchscreens just can't replicate. And that's a wrap on our quick journey on the first iPods. It's incredible to see how these devices laid the foundation of today's portable media. If you found this trip down memory lane as fascinating as I did, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech adventures like this. So until next time, see ya.